Good everything. All right, guys. So we are in the final part. This dot state for the first React JS course. So let's jump right in. So so far, we've learned about props being able to make our web app using React dynamic. There's also states. So states are props kind of are like variables that change states are kind of like um just think of them as states uh we'll, we'll jump we'll jump into it right now and you'll, you'll kind of see so um but they both basically do the same thing while props you'll think of in a more dynamic sort of variable way while states are going to kind of be more like an event um so uh a react component can access uh, information in two different ways. You'll see that uh, what you're really going to need to take away right here is this get initial state. This is basically going to set the initial value for our state. And this is going to uh, be pretty, pretty important. So uh, let's go ahead and just create that uh, in our function here. So we're going to create a function called get initial state. And this will be the same for all your states. Um, And what you're going to do for this is basically just return a uh, key value pair for your state. And we'll say title, and then we'll have best app as it is here. Let's go ahead and run that. So this is going to initialize our state right now. So um, similar to how you would access a prop using this dot props and then the name of the property, you do the same thing except it's this uh, state. So um, we'll go ahead and output the state title here, or the, the titles right here. So um, similar to how we do it, anything else. So it's gonna be this dot state dot title. Now it's not going to render out yet because we haven't actually rendered it. We're going to do that right now. So we want it to go out and react on dot render. And then what are we rendering out? We're rendering out our component, our app. And then we're going to render it out to the usual spot document dot get element by ID app. So I'm run that. And now we should see our title best app. Uh, oops. Uh, except app is actually lowercase. So let's make sure we don't make that mistake. There we go. Now, so far you may be saying, oh man, this is pretty similar to props. And there, there is sort of a, a similarity between the two. Um, so um, set state is how you would change the state of uh, something such as mood or hungry here. So you'll see right here, it, it goes into it a little bit more. That'd be this, you'd, you'd be within the object, similar how you do props, this uh, set state would then reset it. So let's go ahead and uh, move on and we'll actually get into doing an example. So um, uh, th this goes on to say that the most common way to reset a state is to just create a function that's going to reset it. So you'll see right here, make some fog is then going to set the state of weather to foggy. So it's kind of just like a, uh, a way of, of doing things. And um, I'm, uh, I'm not too familiar with the difference between states and props other than I believe states reset on load. So if the, if the, if the call isn't happen again when you render it, uh, the state's gonna reset. Um, but yeah, so let's look at the line 12 it says here. And you'll see that there's a ternary uh, operator going on here that's saying, look, if this mood is good, set it to bad, else set it to good. And then we're setting the state here for mood 
uh, which has an initial value of good to our new mood variable. Let's go ahead and jump in toggle.js and we're gonna do something quite similar. So uh, we want to give an initial uh, function, initial state here. So we're gonna say, look, get initial state. And that's a function. And what we're gonna do here is just go ahead and return the state color to green. And remember, green is a variable, not a um, string, so there's no quotations there. So inside of toggles render, we want to give the following attribute to the div. Now, it says right here, you may be a little confused, like, well, why are we using two two pairs of curly brackets and they actually tell us not to worry about it and we'll find out in react.js part two so uh, make sure you watch that tutorial as well all the tutorials um, except the javascript ones from free code count we gotta redo those those are bad those are the dark ages but um all right so what we're saying saying here is we're setting the background which is a simple uh, CSS property and we're gonna set it to this the color that is this state which happens to be green and then finally on line two we're gonna also create uh, it looks like we don't have our react DOM so we're gonna go ahead and require that file and then we're gonna go ahead and it looks let's run this one more time so in between get initial state all right so now we're gonna actually change the state value here we're gonna create a new function called change color and remember uh, when we want to set the state they recommend that most of the time we're gonna actually just do it within a function so we'll do this and what we want to do here is we want to change the color to yellow if it's currently green. So we'll do similar to how they did before. Or oh, we forgot to render render it out here for this first step. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just do uh, React DOM dot render. And what are we rendering out? We are rendering out our toggle component. And from here, we just want to do it to document dot get element by ID. And we're going to do it to the application like we always have. So now we're going to jump back into where we were creating change color. We're going to create a variable called new color. We're going to just do a simple ternary operator like we did before. And we're going to say, look, if it's green, if new color is equal to green, then set it. Uh, so state's color of yellow if it's currently green. All right. So if it's green, set it to yellow. Else, set it to green. And then um, from here, all we want to do is return the value. So we're going to say color, and then we're going to set it to new color. Just going to run that. Oh wow. Um, so it looks like I did something incorrect. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example code. So when we go into mood.js, oh, excuse me, I returned it. What we actually need to do is uh, set the state. My bad. So we're gonna set the state. And what are we setting the state of? Like so, it is going to be the color and then new color. Let's double check, make sure. Looks like we uh, are on point this time around. Got a little confused with the initial state. And of course, make sure that you put that in the correct location. So you'll see right here, I put in get initial state. We actually want to put it into change color. And then uh, you'll remember that this is actually a return statement. 
that I am just butchering right now. All right, but anyhow, so we're returning color, and then the color here is by default green, I believe. I don't think we need this either. Oh, we do actually, whoops. Yo, 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 what did I, what did I do here, guys? So, I am totally butchering something up. So, our new color, green is yellow. Our new mood is equal to this dot state dot mood. Oh, whoops. All right, so I messed up this. So, this dot state dot mood, uh, dot color and then we pass in, if that is equal to our ternary operator, there we go. I'm still uh, kind of new to this as well, guys, so I do apologize. This dot state dot, yo, 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 talk to JS, come back, my friend. So, our new color is equal to this dot state, dot color, which is equal to, equal to, there it is, right, please be right, alright, there we go, um, so our wonderful ternary operator that we finally, after having a few brain farts, kind of kicked through, sorry about that, um, but now what we're all we're gonna want to do is create a button here. Uh, it says underneath the H1 tag. So let's go ahead and jump down to here. We'll create a button, and we're gonna just put change color. It's gonna run that. Very nice. Now let's make the button actually work. So we're just gonna go ahead and add a on click attribute that is going to call our change color function. And um, don't forget that uh, this is, I'm typing this out as if we're doing regular HTML, we are not. We're doing react, so this dot change color. And now when we run this, once this renders, we will be able to click this and it's going to change every time. And the reason that we can't do this within the render function is it would, in theory, create an infinite loop because every time we set the state or change the state, it actually then re-renders. Okay. What is going on here, gents? Uh, I'm pretty sure this was... Let's go ahead and run this one more time. Thought we already did this. Oh, this is what's going on. Uh, I spelled color capitalized. I was like, oh. Yeah. All right, so on click, and then we're setting it equal to this dot change color. Spelling and syntax will be the death of me. All right, let's go right ahead and run this for the final time. Bam, let's see it, we got it this time. I'm positive. I see no other errors I could possibly make with naming and setting up this. Yeah, don't don't disappoint me right now. Go, <laughs> go Gabby. Uh, there it goes, almost done. This really does load really slowly. If it doesn't load this slow for you guys, please do let me know. And you'll see right here, it's changing color. So it's changing the state, and our setting the state here based off our, uh, our um, new color here, and then it's running render each and every time. Pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. It goes into more detail over these next two things here about how uh, change color calls this dot set state. Uh, so right here, uh, our on click functions called to change it between green and yellow. And um, 
it goes in a little bit more about these brackets. Uh, it talks about how um, we we should also have to call render again, right? Uh, but it's actually by default set up so that this dot set state automatically calls render. Um, this is why you can't call it within the render function because then you would have an infinite loop. Um, so after that, just kind of congratulate yourself on finishing up the first part of uh, react.js um, I'm kind of curious why they didn't just make it one course but hey uh, I guess we'll find out going on but as always guys don't forget to like share and um, support me on Patreon I appreciate you watching sorry about the few uh, little uh, brain frets there but uh, you know uh, the hiccups are all part of programming so uh, I guess that's it but uh, thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next video Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and share and support me on Patreon. Check out wayup.com. It's a great way to find full-time jobs, internships, part-time jobs, and one-time freelance work for the college student. All you need is a .edu email. It's completely free, and you'll help me out in the process too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.